Before we consider the factors that affect the colour of complex ions, let's quickly remind ourselves of why they are coloured in the first place. Here is an orbital box diagram of the splitting of the 3D sublevel into the only example we need to know in IV chemistry where two of the orbitals are slightly higher in energy than the other three. Because a transition metal ion would all, will always have an incomplete D sublevel, there will always be space allowing an electron to absorb energy and jump up to one of the higher 3D orbitals. Because this process absorbs a specific wavelength of visible light, the colour of the solution that we observe will be the complementary colour to that wavelength. Remember that we can identify the complementary colour using the colour wheel found in the data booklet. So if, for example, the wavelength of light absorbed by the electron transition was found in the yellow part of the visible spectrum, we would predict the colour of the solution to appear violet, which is opposite yellow on the colour wheel. It's the size of the energy gap between the split D sublevel that affects the colour that's absorbed and therefore the colour that's observed in my solution. And the size of that energy gap is affected or influenced by the amount of interaction between the lone pair on the ligand and the D orbitals. Let's have a look at that in a generic example. Let's first consider an example where there are low levels of ligand to d orbital interaction, meaning there's a small energy gap. Because this is a smaller energy gap, let's imagine that it corresponds to the absorption of light with a wavelength of about 600 nanometers, and this would be in the orange part of the visible spectrum. And if I have a look at my color wheel, if orange light is absorbed during that electron transition, then the complementary colour would be blue, so my solution would appear blue. Now let's see what happens when we change the amount of interaction between the ligand and the d orbitals. Let's consider um, an example where there are high levels of ligand to d orbital interaction. You can see that because of these high levels of interaction, we have a much larger gap in energy between my split D sublevel. And this means that an electron transitioning up to one of the higher D orbitals would need to absorb light of a higher energy or a shorter wavelength. So let's now imagine that it's absorbed uh, light with a wavelength of 500 nanometers, which is found in the green part of the visible spectrum. And in order to find the complementary color, I look at the opposite side of the colour wheel to green, which would be red. So in this comparative example, we can see how the amount of interaction between a ligand and the d orbitals can change the splitting and therefore will change the amount of energy absorbed for an electron transition, which in turn will affect the colour that we observe in the solution. So for IB chemistry, we now need to consider the three factors that can affect the amount of interaction between ligands and d orbitals. We'll start off with the first one, which is the identity of the metal ion. As with any elements in the periodic table, the identity is defined by the number of protons it has in the nucleus. So if, for example, I have more protons in one metal ion than another, there will be a greater attraction towards the negative or partially negative ligands in the solution. And if there's a greater attraction, i.e. pulling them closer, there's going to be more interaction between those ligands and the d orbitals. And as we saw before, this means that there will be greater d orbital splitting. So let's consider a quick example. So here's two different complex ion solutions. You can see the formulas written above and then the colour of the solution shown underneath. And here's a bit of information about the number of protons and electrons in the transition metal in each case. You'll notice in, in both they have the same number of electrons, but the uh, iron ion has one more proton than the manganese. So we'd, we'd expect to see a greater amount of D sublevel splitting in the complex ion on the right hand side compared to the left. Let's see if we can identify this effect using the colour wheel. The manganese complex ion appears red, therefore it must have absorbed the complementary colour, which in this case is green. 
the iron complex iron on the right hand side appears a kind of orangey colour. Therefore it must have absorbed in the blue part of the visible light spectrum. And as predicted, the Fe complex ion has absorbed blue light which has a shorter wavelength than the green light absorbed by the other ion because of the greater splitting of the D sublevel. Let's now consider the second factor that we need to be aware of. So we now need to consider the impact of the oxidation state of the metal. And by oxidation state, we're really talking about the charge on the transition metal ion before it formed a complex ion with ligands. So if I had a higher initial charge on the metal ion, we would expect to see a greater attraction towards ligands in the solution, and therefore a greater interaction between ligands and the d orbitals. Again, this would lead to greater d orbital splitting. Let's see if we can consider this in an example. Again, in this, uh, in this example, we can see two different complex ions. They are almost identical, except the complex ion on the left has two positive charges, the one on the right has three positive charges. And in both cases, the charge on the complex ion is actually very similar to the oxidation state of the metal. And you can see that this impacts the color of the solutions. Now we said before that the oxidation state of the metal increasing would lead to greater splitting of the D sublevel. So let's see if this is true by looking at the colour wheel. The vanadium with the oxidation state of plus 2 appears violet, meaning it must have absorbed light in the yellow part of the spectrum. And for the complex iron solution on the right, which appears yellow, it must have absorbed light in the violet part of the spectrum. So, as predicted, the vanadium complex iron with a plus 3 oxidation state has absorbed light of a shorter wavelength, or higher energy, because of the greater splitting. Let's now consider the third factor that we need to know about. For this third and final factor, we're considering the identity of the ligand, which is referring to what the ligand actually is. And you, you don't need to memorise all of the ligands as you can find them in the spectrochemical series in the data booklet. And of most use to us, the spectrochemical series is ordered in the increasing effect on d orbital splitting. It looks something like this. So as we move from left to right across the spectrochemical series, we expect to see larger and larger energy gaps between the split D sublevel. Let's consider an example. So here are our two complex ion solutions. Again, you'll notice that they are different colours. And of course, the identity of the metal ion is the same. They both contain chromium. And the oxidation state in both is also plus 3. So let's consider the identity of the ligands and how that is affecting the colour. The complex ion on the left has hydroxide ligands and the complex ion on the right contains ammonia ligands. So identifying where these ligands are on the spectrochemical series above, I can predict that the complex ion containing the ammonia ligands will have a greater amount of d orbital splitting compared to the one containing hydroxide ions. Let's use our colour wheel and see if this is true. The complex ion containing hydroxide ligands is observed to be green, Therefore, it must have absorbed in the red part of the visible spectrum. And the complex containing ammonia ligands uh, is observed to be violet, so must have absorbed in the yellow part of the visible spectrum. And as predicted, the complex ion containing ammonia has absorbed light of a shorter wavelength or greater energy because of the greater splitting caused by those ligands. Let's now try and summarise the key points from this video. Firstly, the size of the energy gap in d orbital splitting determines the colour of a complex ion. And there are three factors that affect the size of this energy gap. The first one is the identity of the metal ion, effectively the number of protons it has in the nucleus. The second one is the oxidation state of the metal, 
Remember that this is effectively the charge of the ion before it forms a complex ion with ligands. And the third is the identity of the ligands themselves. And you can find more information about those and the spectrochemical series in the data booklet. It's also worth noting that the geometry of a complex ion can affect d orbital splitting, but it's actually not required for IB chemistry. Hopefully, this video is of some help.